It's the thought that counts. Growing up, I was blessed genetically with a very fast metabolism, meaning that regardless of how much I ate or what I put in my body food-wise, I was always going to be a twig. It was actually kind of annoying. Now, people always talk about once you reach college that this changes. People say you're gonna put on your freshman 15 because your body's changing a little bit and you're eating slightly less healthy food. Now, this didn't happen for me. I was still a twig in college, but it did happen about four years later. I always tell people that I gained my freshman 15 four years too late. And for a while, this didn't make sense to me, but you start to realize that in college, you are still living a very active lifestyle. So even if you are eating unhealthily, you are still walking to classes and walking to work and generally just being very active. And once, at least for me, once you graduate college, what are you doing with your life? You are sitting in your office at work or you are sitting on your couch at home. So just in case you didn't know, if you are going to eat unhealthily and not exercise or make healthy life decisions, you're probably going to have an unhealthy result. So now you know. And knowing is half the battle. With this realization that I had gained a little bit of weight that I never really had to deal with before, I was going to make the decisions to start dieting and exercising and generally just trying to live a more healthy lifestyle. Problem solved, right? I decided I was going to make these life changes and things were going to become better for it. Well, surprise, surprise, just because I thought and wanted to live a healthy lifestyle, did that mean that I was actually going to do it? I was very intentional for a while, but you know, then you have a week where you decide you're not gonna work out as much and you're gonna eat some slightly less healthy food, some really nice cake, a cookie here and there, a lot of sugar, and at the end of that week, you feel like you're back to square one again. So even though I knew that I wanted to be better and be more healthy, at the end of the day, that is a lot easier said than done. That leads me to my question for you today. Are good intentions enough? Put it this way. Have you ever been in a situation where because of some poor communication, you accidentally ended up hurting a friend, even though you had good intentions for something you're going to do for them, they still ended up hurt. Does that make it okay that they're hurt? I don't know. We can have the best intentions in the world, but that doesn't mean anything if the results of those intentions are still less than satisfactory. Our passage today, found in Romans 3, talks a little bit about this. Romans 3, chapter 23 says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Even though we know that we are broken and sinful and that we want to live more God-pleasing lives, we can't always do that. Even though we have good intentions, that doesn't mean we're going to live perfect, holy lives. But when we put this passage in with the next few verses, it changes the picture entirely. So I'm going to read this entire passage, this verse 23, with the verses after it as well. Romans 3, verses 23 through 25 says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. We know that we all fall short of the glory of God. We're all broken and sinful. But we also know that we are redeemed and given salvation. But how does that come to be? It's not through our good intentions, I'll tell you that. No, our our salvation, our redemption, our righteousness comes by His blood as a gift, paid in full, through Christ, received in faith. It is through the sacrificial work of Christ, what He did, Him living a perfect life, 
he did not fall short of the glory of God. It's through his perfect, righteous, and holy life, and through his sacrificial love and his sacrificial death for us, and his resurrection, that we get to gain our salvation. So, our good intentions don't do anything for us when it comes to earning um, our righteousness, earning our salvation. But that doesn't mean that our good intentions are pointless. I think we can view our good intentions in a different light. Instead of thinking of our good intentions as leading to our righteousness and our salvation, I think we can be thinking of them as our response to the amazing work that Christ already did for us. Our good intentions aren't a bad thing, but we know that it's not our good intentions that do anything good for us. The good work's already been done. We don't have to worry about that. So we're free to use our intentions, our good intentions, to respond to Christ's amazing work for us. Because that's what faith is. Faith is our response to Christ's amazing work for us. And that is something we can be very intentional about. So here's my question for you this week, my one question. How can you intentionally respond this week to the amazing good news of what Christ has done for you in your life? We know that when we only focus on our good intentions, we don't get that far. But when we focus on the amazing work that Christ has already done for us, that he has brought us to the finish line, we know that we can use our intentions as a response to his great work.